Welcome to our lecture online and we're continuing here with our journey through the evolutionary stages of low mass stars. So stage one we had all the proper conditions. We had regions in space where had cold, dark, dust and gas ready to collapse, ready for gravity to push together close enough in dense enough regions where stars could evolve. But then we had pressure pushing back because whenever gravity tries to push gas together, pressure builds up, pressure pushed back and so it was usually a stalemate and gravity just could not get over the repulsive forces of the pressure of the gases. So something had to happen. So in stage two, if something were to go forward and clouds of dust and gas were to collapse to turn into stars eventually, you needed some other condition to make that happen. Some of the things that could happen, for example, there could be a nearby very hot blue star, blue stars that are very high temperatures, put out enormous quantities of light and also UV radiation. And that radiation pressure would, would collide with a region of dust and gas, pushing that dust and gas closer together, increasing the density. So external influence is almost always necessary to get this process to take place. Sometimes also within the galaxies, we would have differential speeds of masses within the galaxy moving, which would mean that a faster uh, region that would move faster and the region in front of it would collide with the slow region in front of it and again compressing gases closer together. In some cases we have collisions caused by pressure waves from moving dust and gas. So there would be uh, pressure waves to, from various sources. For example, gas expulsion from a supernova could take a bunch of dust and gas and push it forward at very high speeds colliding in with another mass of dust and gas again condensing or making the density of that dust and gas uh, much higher to the point where gravitational collapse could begin. And so because of these external, uh, these external influences, you could get to the point where the gravitational force would be sufficient then to take over and begin to collapse that cloud of dust and gas, overcoming the repulsive force on the pressure. So it's always this constant battle between gravity and pressure, and eventually when gra gravity does win over, the process begins and once it begins it's hard to stop because gravity becomes stronger and stronger as the density of the cloud of dust and gas becomes greater and greater. What we also found was that as this would then happen sometimes we have a situation where the cloud of dust and gas would fragment into different pieces. So for example here I have a situation where we have four different pieces and each piece in itself would then continue the gravitational collapse causing then to be multiple stars being formed in the same region. Sometimes multiple stars could be thousands or hundreds of thousands like in global clusters, but in typical situations there are scenarios where we see a lot of solar system kind of environments where two or three or four stars exist within the same solar system region. Our star is kind of unique, our sun, but there's only one of them, but there's plenty of places where there'll be two or three or four stars formed in the same area, and so that is usually caused by the fragmentation of this cloud of dust and gas. Because of that, there used to be theory that we felt that there was never a situation where a star could ever be bigger than 15 times the mass of our own sun. And so that would be the ultimate limit of size for stars. But since then, we found stars that are over 100 times the mass of our sun. So this fragmentation situation doesn't always occur. There must be cases where large chunks of dust and gas continue to collapse, don't fragment and form a single huge star. But in many cases, as we've seen in our universe, since there's so many binary uh, star systems in the universe that more than one star will be formed in the same region through this fragmentation process. But again, through external influences, the stage two process will start up and will begin to collapse, no longer to be stopped by pressure once it gets past a certain area. By, once it gets past a certain density region, the gravitational collapse can no longer be stopped. But usually it does require this external influence because on its own, there's just not enough pressure uh, not enough gravitational force to overcome the pressure uh, pushing back, keeping these clouds from collapsing. Maybe that's why it's taken so many billions of years for stars to still continue to form and collapse from these, um, from these big regions of dust and gas in our galaxies.